All right, Alexander, let's talk about the French elections, which are coming up very soon. A couple of weeks. Incredible. Uh, Macron, the most despised man in all of Europe and in all of France. How how are things looking for Macron and his uh, party as they headed to the elections? The, well, the, the, the parliament, the parliament elections, not the president. Macron well, is, is not up for re-election. Just want to say that because sometimes a lot of people believe that it's Macron that's that's up for elections. No. Yeah, the the interesting thing is he's not up for elections, but the entire election is about him. And the most interesting right. thing about true, that also true. is that, of course, he brought on these elections. He he triggered these elections when he didn't need to, and by doing so, he has created chaos within the political system in France in ways that I suspect he didn't expect, and he appears to have turned everybody against him. Now there is. Two really incredible pictures about Macron, which have appeared over the last couple of days, which, in my opinion, says say it all. The first one is a picture taken from his back. It's a black and white photo of Macron meeting with his cabinet and informing them that he was about to announce parliamentary elections. And he, he didn't apparently brief anybody in the cabinet about this. He took them completely by surprise. The story that he consulted Nicolas Sarkozy, the previous French president, and that Sarkozy advised him to call the elections has turned out to be completely untrue. Sarkozy has come out and said, I had absolutely nothing to do with this crazy idea. Anyway, you see this photo, you see this row of people looking at Macron and the anger in all their faces, this sort of con- controlled fury as they hear what Macron is telling them. And as as one French commentator said, the, a, a look of almost hatred in some of the eyes. It's all there to see. It's quite remarkable. And, of course, the other picture, the other film that everybody's talking about, well, it's everybody, those who've seen it are talking about, is one that happened at the G7 when Macron... Apparently, nobody really wanted to talk to Macron. He was he found it very difficult to find people to meet and speak with. But he ended up having a clash with Giorgio Maloney, who is, of course, um, much in some ways much more of a real politician than he is, and who is in full control of the Italian government. Anyway, they had a massive row, apparently, <coughs> over the G7 communique on topic of abortion rights. Hardly a big issue, you would have thought. Anyway, they had a big, big row. And again, you see Macron going down a line of dignitaries at a dinner party and there's Maloney looking at him. And um, she clearly looks furious and angry with him as well. And of course, the reason people are angry with him, including, I suspect, Maloney, is because they sense that at a very important time, a critical time, he has basically smashed all the furniture, the political furniture in France. We're having all of the various parties, apart from um, Le Pen's, now in crisis. The party of the centre-right, Les Républicains, who claim quite falsely, by the way, to be the continuers of the gaullist tradition, you know, the party that stands for what Charles de Gaulle used to stand for. Uh, Completely untrue, by the way. They are uh, liberals in a way that de Gaulle emphatically was not. But I'm not going to go into that. Anyway, they've had a massive row. Uh, Their leader wanted to go into uh, some kind of electoral pact with Le Pen, Um, The MPs of the party then voted to oust him. He barricaded himself in the party's headquarters. A court has now annulled the decision of the MPs. (laughs) It's completely unclear who is leading the party or whether the party even exists. I mean, clearly that party, you know, the traditional establishment party of the centre-right, is in some kind of meltdown. Then uh, Macron uh, tried to get the left, some of the left-wing parties to support 
his party, which is collapsing. The left said under no circumstances, none of the left part, left-wing parties were prepared to work with Macron. They all absolutely rejected any idea of some kind of political alliance with him, which is what I suspect he thought would happen. Anyway, they created, they cobbled together in a few hours of negotiations, these are the left-wing parties, a so-called popular front, which um, people in France uh, will remember was a movement that was created in the 1930s, an alliance of the socialists and the communists to basically see off the uh, far right in France at that time. We formed a government led by a man called Leon Blum, which, is not, which was very crisis-ridden, by the way. But anyway, that's old history. But it's very much a part of the mythology of the left in France, the, you know, the popular front of the 30s. So they're now trying to create a popular front for today, except, of course, that as soon as they created it, it became clear that they can't stand each other or the various parties that make up the so-called popular front. They all dislike each other. Jean-Luc Mélenchon and the um, major part, one of the major figures on one of the other parties that make up this alliance. I think his, I think his name is um, Glucksmann. Or, you know, I, I've got to call, I mean, I, I'm not sure what his name is. Anyway, they disagree on issues like Ukraine, for example. So, I mean, there's already divisions about that. Mélenchon has gone and is now sacking uh, all sorts of people within his own group that he doesn't agree with and is promoting others. So it looks like this popular front, which probably just about hold together until the election, but is already coming apart or, or, or is starting to crack and disintegrate and come apart at the seams. And of course, Macron's party in total disarray. disarray. They don't know what, uh, what they are supposed to stand for. They've got no time to set agree a program they're deeply unpopular they are uh, uh, associated with the most unpopular presidents in the history of the fifth republic i mean most disliked president in the history of the fifth republic everybody senses that they're going down as well so at the moment i have to say this le pen and her party, the Rassemblement National, look like they're facing an open goal. Whether something will sort itself out over the next few weeks as the election approaches, we will have to wait and see. But one way or the other, the establishment in France are furious with Macron. And whatever it was that Macron thought he was doing by calling this election, whether he really thought that there would be a consolidation of the centre and the left and the centre-right behind him in order to see off Le Pen. Anyway, that that has clearly failed and it's not going to happen. And it looks as if Le Pen and her party are heading for, if not perhaps an outright majority, at least a very, very increased presence in the French National Assembly. Yeah, if, if Macron gets hammered, at this election, if if Le Pen really wins big, then then Macron's on his way out. I agree. And he's going to be relieved, and he's going to be happy and relieved deep down inside. Yes, he's going to be happy and relieved because he is getting rid of a France and and a Europe and a world that he has contributed to to making into an absolute mess. And he knows uh, it. Maybe absolutely he, maybe he doesn't doesn't say it, but deep down inside. I think that Macron knows it that he's really screwed everything up. I think I think you're I think you're absolutely right. I think that also another level. I think you know his own vanity makes it very difficult for him to uh, continue to be a lame duck in 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 the changing situation that there is in France. One thing he knows that he's not going to be president one way or the other beyond 2027, and. Uh, he feels, I'm sure, that his genius is not properly appreciated. He probably blames the French for the fact that they haven't understood the great vision that he had for them. As you rightly say, he senses that his own government has failed. And I, I think he will go. I mean, I think I, after we said it in our previous programme, 
The very next day, reports started to circulate that Macron had spoken to members of his entourage and told them that um, if Le Pen's party were to win the election, he would resign. Just what we said he would do. And then, of course, they pulled it back. They pulled the story back and said that he would, in fact, stay. But it's not difficult to understand why they would pull it back, because if um, the French think that by voting for Le Pen, they're getting rid of Macron, <laughs> that might incentivize them to vote for Le Pen. I mean, he is that unpopular in France. So um, by saying that he will stay, or, um, or at least by spreading the reports that he will indeed stay, they're, they're perhaps giving um, less of a reason for people to vote for Le Pen. Anyway, one way or the other, he has um, created turmoil within France. And the French establishment, I don't know whether he realises this, is absolutely furious with him. And so is the uh, global Western establishment as, as well, as we saw at the G7. Yeah, I don't think the, the elections in, in France or in, in the UK, uh, Sunak and Macron, the fact that they've called elections, I don't think this is a coincidence. I'm not saying they coordinated. I'm just saying this is, this is, their, this is their personality type. They're their narcissist, ego-driven um, personality uh, type where, where they say, you know, this, this, is a, this is the best way for me to extract myself from from the catastrophe that, that I've created, but I'll, I can never own up to the fact that I've created it. You know, so, so they have to protect themselves from, from actually taking responsibility and accountability for everything that they've made a mess of. And so the most convenient way to, to get out of this mess is to just call elections and just get out. It, it's simple. And, 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 and what's the U.S. going to tell you? What's, what's the Biden White House going to tell you? What is the, what is the deep state going to tell you? You can't call it. We're a democracy. Of course we can call elections. Of course we can have elections. We have to have elections. Look at, look at what happened to us at the EU parliament uh, elections. Look at the results that we got. I have to call elections now. I mean, it fits very nicely for Macron and, and Sunak. Diff, different narrative, but, you know, the, the same type of result, the same well, type the of outcome. And you can tell they're not really campaigning. They don't really, they don't want to be reelected. These guys, they really don't. No, this is this is absolutely. They don't true. want to say power uh, in Macron's case. I, I, Macron's I, case I, I, I absolutely. I, I think you're absolutely right about the personal motivations of these leaders. I mean, Sunak, who is already, you know, uh, uh, married to the daughter of a billionaire, and is himself an immensely rich man, you know, hundreds of millions. All the reports are that he's thinking of leaving the UK entirely and going to the United States. And he's not convincingly denied them, by the way. <laughs> just, just, just saying. So, I mean, I think that he's already look, looking to where he's going to go. He's not really wanting to stay in Britain. Whatever mess he leaves behind, it, it, it's fine for others to sort out. With um, Macron, where he's not quite in the same position but he comes from the same world of you know privilege and power and i think he calculates that again whatever the mess he leaves behind is he'll be able to retreat back into it and all will be forgiven eventually and i think about that he's right by the way <clears throat> i think he's still useful um to people in the global setup and besides, as we've said many times, failure for these people is not something that they hold against you very much in the long term. On the contrary, it can actually get you promoted. It can turn out to your advantage. But I think there was another reason, quite apart from the fact that both Macron and Sunak, and we'd already heard reports about this, about Macron, that he was bored and frustrated with his position as president. He, you know, his, I, his attempt to try and creating, you know, set up a war with the Russians, <coughs> which had been exciting and interesting and all of that, it didn't quite work out. So I think that the, you know, apart from the fact that they do want to go, I, I think that there was a major misreading of the political situation in both countries. In Britain, as I said previously, 
The election was called when it was, partly in order to prevent parties on the left and the right organising, so as to challenge the conservative Labour duopoly and the ultimate position of the establishment. It hasn't worked out because Nigel Farage has thrown himself into the election there and turned everything upside down. And it looks as if the Conservative Party might be heading towards collapse. So that wasn't, I think, the plan, the original plan. But we can see what the original plan was. I think the original plan, again, in France, and I think there were probably fairly wide discussions, maybe not with his cabinet and with people like, people like Sarkozy, but with the other people who hold power in France, was precisely the same in France. Um, create a consolidation, use the elections to create a consolidation of the centre, um, push Le Pen back, prevent the slide to Le Pen and the uh, Rassemblement National, which looked like it was going to deliver Ma uh, Le Pen the presidency in 2027, try to short circuit all of that and block Le Pen before she gets there. And again, it's not quite working out. But then it's not surprising because the people that Sunak and Macron are almost certainly talking to are not people who know very much really about electoral politics because they've never worked inside them. <laughs> and that, that's the fundamental problem they have. They don't really understand uh, what, how the flows of opinions in elections really work. Yeah, I, I agree with you. The, they misread everything. It, Sunak missed his team. His team misread everything. Macron and his team, they misread everything. But the two men, I'm certain, are not regretting the fact or sorry at the fact that things have been misread. Because for them, if if they manage to, to come out okay in the elections, okay. Macron says, okay, I, I got the vote, the support of the French people. I got another three years. Fine. You know, I'll do my three years. But if things fall apart, Macron, he can move on to the next bigger and better thing. And, and, and I think he's fine with that. Absolutely. He's soon act the same. Hey, you're, you're, he's you're, fine with the fact that he's going to oh, be absolutely. in the U.S. enjoying his billions. You, 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 and no, you, one, you, no one can hold anything against him. I, I think that's, that, that's the key. The, the party establishment, the globalists, they're not going to really be able to to go after them either. No, I, I I agree with that completely. If you look at Macron, I mean, apparently he's extremely uh, um, cheerful and confident that he did the right thing, as he says. He seems to be buoyant, if anything. Whereas uh, uh, Sunak, well, I mean, he's obviously not enjoying the election very much, but then elections have never been his thing. He doesn't look particularly depressed. I suspect when it's all over, he'll be demob happy, frankly. <laughs> it was never something that he was really comfortable uh, doing. And he'll be happy to be rid of the whole thing. Absolutely. All right. Uh, we will end it there. The Duran.locals.com. We are on Rumble, Odyssey, Bitch, Telegram, Rockfin, and Twitter X. And go to the Duran shop. Pick up some football merch. Use the code FOOTBALL24. Take care.